Good evening, Trent Tobago. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACTN. It's a pleasure every Tuesday evening to come into your homes where we talk something sports in Trent Tobago. Before we get into tonight's program, I just want to say condolences to the family of uh, Tiba McKnight, the former Naparima College, and a very, you know, vibrant person, footballer, who passed away last night. Um, he recently had his academy in Coover, dealing with a lot of the young kids from that community. So again, condolences to the family and to all the friends and members of the club, to Tiba McKnight. He surely will be missed. Tonight, we want to talk a bit about cycling in Trinidad Tobago, because um, cycling has been in the news for the past two or three years, and we are on the verge of something big happening in cycling. Only this week, uh, Tinil Campbell placed third in a race in, um, in Spain. Uh, she's one of the female cyclists. I think she's one of the only professional female cyclists in Trinidad and Tobago, and she has already qualified for the Olympics. We also have uh, Nicholas Paul and uh, Quasi Brown. Those guys are on the verge of uh, qualification. And tonight, we're going to be chatting with the newly elected president of the Trinidad and Tobago Cycling Federation, Mr. Joseph Roberts. It's a pleasure. Welcome yeah. to ACT. Thanks, George, and good night to you. Here. You have taken over the reign um, just over a month or so? Or? Actually, it's about. Yeah, close 27 days, right, around that, yeah, 28 yeah, days. That's right. And uh, as I said, cycling in Trent Tobago has grown by leaps and bounds within the last couple of years. We have done tremendously well in competitions. We had some little instances where, where things happen. Well, in sports, every, there's always some little things in, 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 in that. But we're not going to get into that. What we want to talk about is the positive aspect of cycling. Now, as the newly elected president, you will have your own vision for the sport. What is your vision for the sport 2020 and beyond? Okay, George, that's a good question because in any vision, you have to ensure that the entire fraternity is on board mm -hmm. with your vision. So, Currently, there are some things that we need to do, and I call it the four building blocks. The first building block, it was about ensuring that we have both Quincy, Quincy Brown, and um, Nicholas prepared for the World Championship. Mm, that's the one in Germany. Yes, the yeah. one in Germany, mm. and post the World Championship, preparation towards um, the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the first thing that, that it, I call it these little fires that came up mm -hmm. in a, quite a short space of time. And it was surrounding how do we ensure that the preparation for the team towards Olympics is in place. Mm -hmm. I'll speak a little, little later on that as we go along. Yeah. The second building block is about funding. Mm -hmm. As an organization, we have some debts. The question is, how do we change the business model to ensure that we have a sustained um, source of income? Yeah. So that is something that I'm working on. There are some short-term um, fundraising events. Mm -hmm. Um, some medium-term um, fundraising events. But the big thing is, how can we sustain mm -hmm. throughout the year with a business model that will allow um, us to be funded, to conduct, whether it's development program or a high-performance program, etc. Mm -hmm. The third building block, I would say, is about governance. Because you need to look at, revisit your constitution. You need to, in be, to ensure that you are able to be effective and efficient mm -hmm. to all your stakeholders. Yes. So you can't have um, um, a constitution or process and procedures that is holding you back from acting quickly. But at the same time, 
you have to have balance. Yes. You must have procedures to guide the organization. So that's another component that we'll be looking forward to mm -hmm. addressing mm -hmm. some of the weaknesses mm -hmm. and build on that. Mm -hmm. The fourth area that I see is very important is building capacity. And building capacity will take the format of one, more, how do you encourage more people into the sport? How do you ensure that you um, capture those people who are riding on weekend? How do you get them involved? How do you engage the community surrounding in, at the National Cycling Center? And also, how do you get people with professional skills to help um, the sport progress? So those are the four, I would call it, building blocks, mm. right? And as we move forward, is to get cycling embedded. It's already embedded, but how do you get it out there? Because it's one of the means of transport that it, it reduces your carbon footprint mm -hmm. in terms of um, um, in, the environment. Mm -hmm. So that is what I am looking for, uh, forward to. How advanced are you regarding these four pillars? Well, I know the guys already left, right? So I guess that that is one pillar that has already continued along the line of continuously. So, right? so with regards to, as I say, probably in 10 days in office and we, we not having the services of Erin Hartwell, mm -hmm. you know, um, we've embarked on a strategic relationship with the UCI. We yeah. have been um, sending our top athletes to the UCI mm -hmm. at their training, World Training Center yeah. in Switzerland. Uh, T. Neil also have had the opportunity to spend some time in Switzerland. And that has, that has, uh, and, and, that has, has a, a tremendously... Yeah, yeah, that, that has mm -hmm. a, a tremendous growth. When you performing out in, um, in the world stage in that kind of environment mm -hmm. against some of the world best, you know, it could only foster um, it could only foster something positive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm focusing on the track team, so we, we reached out to the UCI and we were able to get them to first take the guys for two uh, months leading up to, well, a couple of weeks leading up to the World Championship. And then we also um, had some discussions about post World Championship leading up to the um, Olympics. Mm -hmm. So we have um, Coach Craig McLean out there, mm -hmm. and he will be overseeing the guys' program. Uh, when I when I when I look at at his um, his career, he he did well, so he seems to be quite qualified. Yes, um, the UCI would normally get um, quite. Um, good achievers mm -hmm. to conduct their program because it's not only um, our guys would be there. Okay. We have um, uh, one of the top cyclists from Suriname, Jaya. Mm -hmm. He is also at that training facility. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that um, we we're quite happy about and we're quite happy that we're able to procure this service. So I could see um, it's only for the guys to put their 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 head to the wheel mm -hmm. or um, foot to the pedal, if mm -hmm. you want to use that. And, and we'll see what's happened from there. We already have kind of basic framework in terms of what we intend to do. Mm -hmm. But we want to firm it up a little later and then we will communicate that to the um, public. Yeah. Now, Kwesi and, uh, and Nicholas are pretty well placed in the rankings. And they have uh, Elijah Green with them. So they have that. They're not alone in the sense of with Craig alone. They have at least well a little connection with Elijah. What I'm trying to get at is that the relationship. Because remember, uh, Mr. Hartwell was Elijah and these guys. So they had built a, a sort of close-knit family like. Yes, um, George, you, you, when you're in a high-performing environment and you have guys testing one another on a daily basis, mm. right, um, you will get that camaraderie 
going. So yes, Elijah is a component of the team, mm -hmm. um, but the dynamics might have changed a little bit. And he, together with the manager, David Francis and um, Derek, who is the physio, they will be joining um, the guys on there mm -hmm. in Germany. So they probably would be leaving around the 21st mm -hmm. to, to meet the, the guys. And um, we see and Nicholas will be coming from Switzerland okay. to Germany. Mm -hmm. But I must point out that it's important to understand it's a, it's a team. Mm -hmm. So we also have locally Quincy Alexander, who yes. is part of okay. the pool, mm -hmm. who is part of the sprint pool, and he would be a non-traveling reserve. Okay. So the expectation is for him to keep sharp yes. because cycling is a high performance, high, high um, uh, risk sport. So we do, we, you know, not too sure why we wouldn't want anything to happen. Mm -hmm. You must have a reserve. And he will be continuing his preparation. Locally. Locally. Right. Right? Um, so it's, it's the responsibility of him and his coach to make sure that yeah, he is, he is keep fit mm -hmm. and prepared in the event of, of any, you know, um, thing happening. And that is what, you, you know, sometimes we only look at just the guys, but it's a team. Yes. And when yes. you start to look at team performance, you have reserves. Mm -hmm. And those reserves at some point in time yeah. may yeah, they, or may they, not they, come on. Yeah, but they, 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 are, they are just important, and as important as, as the, the... But sometimes the, we miss that as general yes. audience. And yes. when we look at the whole scheme of sport, yeah. we just focus on what? the two. But mm -hmm. you have to look at the broad picture. Mm -hmm. And that is what I um, um, intend to do to ensure that we we are successful, mm -hmm. you know, it's a business. Eh? When you look at business, you always speak about risking. Yes. Risking things, you yeah. go to a project, you yeah. have to make sure you risk yeah. all the necessary yeah. things. And, and that's just one of the risks that you want to make sure that you yeah. mitigate against. Yeah. I'm not saying if, but I'm saying when those guys qualify for the Olympics, they will have to have their own coach. Or is this guy no, no, Craig will be taking them along. Oh, he's taking them straight to the Olympics. Straight to the Olympics. Okay, so that's right. good. So, so that means they have a, 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 at least a fair amount of time for they to get that gel going together yes. with coach and athlete. Well, post the, the World Championships, you have that big block of training, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be very disruptive if you try to, yeah. to really when you start to look at procuring a course and all the things that go with that, mm -hmm. that will be very mm -hmm. disruptive yeah. and it would not really, you would not be able to move in a timely manner. Yeah. I think, uh, think procuring the services of Craig from at the training center yeah. was the most ideal yeah. thing to do at yeah. this point in time. I think, I, I think it's good because um, I was of the opinion that um, he would have been there for this a short period of time. That's why I asked you that question. Right. But since he's going to be there on a, basically a long term until the Olympics, I think it will only be beneficial to, 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 the, to the cyclists and them because then they can have that be, be sustained as they go as they go along. You know? Yeah, you're correct. You're correct, George. And that's why I said uh, important one of the one of the building blocks was mm -hmm. to make sure that that was put in place. And I think we have that we have put that in place. The next thing we need to look at is the physiological needs of the guys. Yes. Right? What happens to them outside of training? You know, their diet, whether they have a little fun to take their girlfriend out, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Because again, we tend to focus on just the projects. The projects have one type of funding, but then you have to look at the athlete as a whole. There are other needs. And, um, and that, if it's one thing we have been falling short of, right? Um, the question is, as we go forward, um, how do we fund that and put in place to meet those physiological needs, right? You see, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have an issue with, with that. Because for instance, you have these guys representing the country, trying to be equal. Right? They are training, right? You have a tournament coming up. They train for the tournament. They might get some sort of funding for the tournament. But when that tournament ends, and the next tournament is in the next two or three months, how do these guys live 
because maybe they can't go and get a job, right? Because nobody's going to hire them for two months or one month, right? So they have to live, they have to sustain their diet while they train until the next event come up. So I'm glad that you mentioned that taking care of them outside of the cycling because these guys will give their life for cycling for the next 10, 15 years, however their lifespan is. But when cycling ends, at that age, sometimes they retire, like in the 30s. Or, or How do they manage after that? Do they find a job? How do they find a job? Because they have given most of their youth to the sport. So you're going to look for a job now at 30 something or 30 years. You know, it's difficult. So even, George, that is important because it's, it's, it's how we do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the economy is not all that great. You know, yeah. And, um, and, and we're in a small resource pool and everybody is trying to get from that small resource pool, which is the state. Mm -hmm. But the question here is how can we move that thinking? Because where, if you were in, let's say, say the U.S., you will have some um, um, sponsors coming up yes. and giving those guys contracts before, whether it's a serial company, mm. whether it's um, a sporting um, um, agency. Now, that is some, an area that we need to explore here in Trinidad. Um, so it's important that we understand some of the issues in having um, at least go to the Olympics or even quasi semi-professional or professional mm -hmm. in Trinidad. It's difficult. We have a small pool. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how can we attract um, the sponsors that is required? How can we engage the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. in, in seeing the importance of sport as a, as a tool to build the nation. Mm -hmm. I think, I think we, 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 we're not um, analyzing the thing deep enough from the positive impact. And no one has really done the kinds of study yeah, to see yeah. the positive impact. So we're just talk, speaking from a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. So really nobody is really listening because mm -hmm. you don't have the empirical data to support. Mm -hmm. And this is where our university come in, yeah. you know, yeah. research. Yeah. And, and um, it's something that we as a society need to look a little more into if we want to really develop as a nation. Okay. Hold that thought for one minute. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion. We will be right back after this short break. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT, and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard ACT. And so, Robert, you know, you brought up a very interesting um, topic there. We, we know that money is tight in the country, but there's tax free for commercial for um, business people for sponsorship and things like that but we normally see the business people coming on board when you're a winner but not when you're trying to be a winner Nicholas Paul goes to the Olympics and come back with a medal everybody will want him to be a spokesman for their company at that point in time but do the Cycling Federation have any department or personnel that can go out and market these guys to Corporate Trent Tobago? Has that been done? Well, we don't have that. Okay. We don't have a staff. Yeah, okay. Right? Um, while we should have a staff, because when you, when you want to um, 
behave in a professional manner, you really should have a staff um, to do certain things. That's why I mentioned earlier on in one of the building blocks mm. to be able to procure services, professional services, mm. given our circumstance and how can we procure some of those prof prof professional services pro bono, mm -hmm. right? We have to change the brand, uh, not only in cycling, but in other oh, sports. Yeah, yeah. When I speak to um, the governance model and the governance structure, we, I'm speaking about if sponsors want to get, to encourage sponsors to get on board, they want to make sure that you have a strong governance model. Definitely. So when you go to them, you say, these are our policies. This is how we operate. It's not a vikey vike situation. Mm. But also the, 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 the corporate sponsors, mine, have to shift. Mm. But we have to do our work internally first. Mm. We have to make sure that we are able to, to put forward the brand of the athletes and the brand of the organization. Mm -hmm. And if we have strong um, policies and procedures, that is one way to encourage um, to encourage the, the corporate sponsors. Mm -hmm. The other way is, I mean, all that this, I would say, um, issue in the, in the papers, it doesn't, it doesn't augur well also. So but, but in terms of sport, our, Which sport doesn't have? None. Yeah, yeah, so, so the question yeah, is, yeah. how do you, with your, with your communication specialist, mm -hmm. make sure that you are able to get your message out and I think as against a, 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 a headline. And I think in, the, in all the years of cycling, I, to me, if I, I might be wrong, but this is the first time we ever had a, an issue. No, we had some issues before. That's, but, but, but minor the, things. Yeah, right? but this, you see, we have put the nation on a high. Exactly. We, there's an expectation. So that, so that so, is why this issue becomes so... But you manage that. Yeah. And, and how you manage that is if you have good corporate communication skills and mm -hmm. people behind with good co um, communication skills to help guide that process, mm -hmm. right? Because some reporters just want a, a song bite. Yes. They just want you to say X and they go on with that. Mm -hmm. But really, is that really the real narrative? Yes. Or put out a headline, yeah. you tell them X, this is the story, you write it out and then you see an X, a, another a headline. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge. And how do you get on top of that as an organization? But you have to have people with the skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to ensure that the, your message Mm -hmm. is the right message that goes out all the time, mm -hmm. right? And, and that is all part of building the organization profile, right? That will help encourage sponsors. How difficult is your job right now? Very difficult. I mean, I, I, I'm But a, you accept it, so that means you, 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 you well, are ready for the challenge. I, understand, I think I, haven't been in the organization a while, mm -hmm. I think I have done a, a relatively okay assessment okay. of what is required to turn the organization or move the organization in a particular yeah, direction. Is. I see this as really a pivot point. Some people call it a watershed moment, but it's an opportunity for us to really, really and truly um, put cycling and, uh, in a place where um, it's right up in mm -hmm. terms of not only the performance, but as an organization. Yes. And um, I, I knew when I got into it, there would be challenges. And it is about how all those competing interests within the organization mm -hmm. understand that it's only, we're all seeking the same goal, you know. Mm -hmm. We may have our little differences, but we are seeking the same goal. And how do we put the athlete first instead of your ego? I mean, that's the challenge. Eh? That's the challenge with, with, with life. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I understand that there will be challenges, but my motto is about finding solutions. You know, solutions. What is the solution? We know that we could... You know, see it on the problems all the time. What's the solution, mm -hmm. right? And in arriving at the solution, there are some things that we just have to do.
So we will get back to the guys and the girl who are up there for the um, trying for the, the Olympics. But I just want to point out yeah. that I've spoken a bit about Tenille. Okay. But Tenille has the mind and heart of a champion. Yeah, very, very true. Right? Very and, true. And um, that is the face mm -hmm. that you want. Because so she has, she has really excelled in a short space of time, you know. You know, sometimes when you go and you leave and you go to a high performance center, it takes you a little while, you know, and it's like she has this ups and she's up there. George, if you want to do something and you put your mind to it, yeah. man, I think Tinil is somebody who sets big goals for herself. Yes, when you, when you speak to her. When she... you set big goals for yourself, mm. all the other small things becomes nothing because nothing must stop you from your goal mm. and she is a positive influence on women in sport yes right i'm um, young girls in sport mm. i mean those are the people we have to put forward in terms of the sport and it's how do we do that okay that has not been done in the past and she's in the best situation um, um currently she's with her team in italy uh, she had her first um, race this weekend. Yeah, she placed third. She placed third. Mm -hmm. You know, you're competing. Really, you're competing with the best out there. Yes. So when you compete with the best, you're in a, a, a camp with people who are highly driven. Yes. The result of that, obviously, positive. is positive. Positive. Yeah. yeah. Positive. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you mentioned that because that brings me to the next question. Now, uh, we we have to get more. Neil Campbell, right? And she is, where, where she is at present, I'm sure there are a lot of young ladies in cycling will want to be right there with her too. But let's come back home because taking care of the guys and Tenille outside there is one part of it. You still have the sport in Trinidad to manage and to run. We have a world-class um, center. center. How do we improve the local and the younger cyclists that remains here? And also, how can we use this venue to attract teams from abroad during the winter to come down? Because that venue is world class, we know that. And sometimes when these guys abroad want to come out from the cold, come into a warm country to, to do their, their training. How can we bridge that to, to build on the Nicholas and the Tinil, but to use all this to build the sport of cycling so it can be fully recognized in Trent Tobago? I say this. We are good in Trinidad about ideas. We will probably pelt out thousands and thousands of ideas. You know, the big question is, ideas into action. How do you move an idea into, yes. into action? How do you bring it into fruition? And I think not a lot of us understand that, right? And the kind of work and planning that goes into it. Mm -hmm. But the National Cycling Center in Cuba is we are ideally placed to deliver on all what you have said. Mm -hmm. One of the things we, we, we are doing currently in terms of development, we have a youth development program mm -hmm. where, where we are racing the kids. So they have an opportunity to train, they have an opportunity mm -hmm. to race, right? We just, this weekend on Sunday, we had something around the velodrome mm -hmm. where we had the registered cyclist come in. Okay. But part of growing that, is how do we engage the community? So we have a community aspect of it. So yes, we have a registered cyclist who belong to club, but also how do we engage the community to come out and then they will then get involved in clubs. Um, we were looking at, you know, we were having a challenge with how do we fund these things? And we had about what, for the first month, we had some cancellations. But I've indicated to the committee, we are not canceling no more event. That is a no-no, right? So 
We have Especially to find... Especially with kids, when they look forward to something they cancel, it tends to... Yes, yeah. and so we have to find ways, and maybe that is one of the things that I'm, is entrusted in me, mm. to make sure that we have these events. So I, I said the next aspect of the, the um, building block was funding. So that is something that I'm dedicating this couple of weeks okay. towards. But coming back to the National Cycling Center, the intention way back, it was not now when that was conceptualized and, um, and, the, and the Federation started to get involved, is to bring a satellite center Yes, I remember. Right? Yes. And that satellite center would have done what you were talking about. Regional um, 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 athletes coming to the center to train. Um, foreign athletes who are in the winter time coming to the center to train. And make that the hub of where we have coaching courses, mechanic courses, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that is still in the making, right? Um, that is one of my projects that I intend to bring in fruition, okay. right? And um, it's a tripartite arrangement with the International Cycling Union, mm. the TTCF, and the government of Trinidad and Tobago, because the facility is the government of yes, Trinidad yeah, and Tobago. Yeah. So it has to be a tripartite mm. arrangement. And um, hopefully, um, before the end of the year, hopefully we can have something um, positive to say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On, on that. Because I'm sure that that could be a revenue earner. Well, yes, it can. It can. It can. As I said, ideas into action. Mm -hmm. Right? It's how do you move it with all this concept into bring it into fruition. Um, my predecessor, Robert Farrier, he did some work on that. Yes, they visited, yeah. they visited the, 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 yes, the, the Switzerland, yeah. but we need to continue mm -hmm. with those follow-up because those are engagement where you engage and enroll people. You have constantly have the discussion happening. You can be constantly networking, right? And all that is part of your capacity building. Mm -hmm. So you need to go out, mm -hmm. right? You can't stay in Trinidad and expect them to have a phone call and, and make yes. those things happen. Yeah. You go and you have a conversation yeah. with people, you have a conversation with the ministry to bring it into fruition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I see big things and good things um, coming out of that okay. satellite, satellite center. But the model, you know, the challenge is when you start to engage um, individuals mm -hmm. to come up with a model that is is suitable for all parties mm -hmm. because sometimes you want to take one party out mm -hmm. and expect that it going to work yeah right but yeah. you have to find a way to mm -hmm. find consensus build consensus agreement and um, maybe memorandum of understanding as we go forward mm -hmm. you talk a bit about mm -hmm. community you got any community involved and um, why I'm bringing up this is because I, I went to Tabakit some time back where Elijah Green has a community program. And I find it quite interesting because um, you talk about getting, you know, sponsors and different things. And when I went up there to see the cyclists and their family, how they were involved, the parents were involved, and it has grown, right? And I think he, well, he, he actually trains instead of a school. Now, the problem is, is that besides Arima, the village, um, the village room in, in, in Kuva, which you cannot take these kids on because they are not experienced enough, and Separia, but we don't have Skinner Park anymore, you don't have a lot of venues for if you go into the community. But as the president, what can a community do Let's say you identify a community and they want to start a cycling project, but we don't have a proper venue. And they might be not as lucky as Elijah to get that school with that large asphalt um, surface. What do they do? George, we have enough venues, eh? Okay. We have enough venues. Again, it's how you, 
is what you're looking at. Okay. Right? Because okay, what do, you, what do you look at to start off a right. cycling project? So, so Elijah is doing a, a good work in Tabakit. Mm -hmm. We have in Arima, um, Madonna also doing a community project. Right. I think Sonics also do something in San Fernando. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the question is expanding that. But one of the basic things, even before you go on a track, mm -hmm. you have your road. Mm -hmm. So once you have a road way that you can secure, make sure it's safe, or an open environment like a schoolyard, okay. right? As young people coming out, there are so different kinds of coaching um, things that you can do, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a growth stage. Um, you can have little circuits, right? And still build, okay. right? So you have, you, there are things that you can do, yeah. right? Um, and build towards the, the main centers, be it um, Arima Velodrome mm -hmm. or Separia, um, um, the Separia facility or the National Cycling Center. Mm -hmm. So you can build towards that. Mm -hmm. You know what the challenge is, eh? And this is my personal thing. The challenge is how do we move people from place to place? Okay. That's the challenge. Yes. So we have, an, uh, you know, I, I, I'll take a little sidestep. So you have all these community centers and you have all these facilities. The ch real challenge, and people asking to build more facilities, the real challenge is how do you move people quickly, easily across our network? Hold That's the challenge. Hold that tough for a minute. We need to take another break. Viewers will be right back after the short break. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT, and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9. Welcome back, viewers. We're talking cycling with the president of the Trent Tobago Cycling Federation, Joseph Roberts. Before the break, you were talking that the venue is not the issue. The issue is moving people. Continue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's how do you move? I look at all these facilities that are built in Trinidad. And when you really look at it, is how easily people can move from one place to the other without being backed up in a traffic jam. I'm not able to walk, step out and get a train to move me from one place to the next or a bus that is coming within a certain time that I can, um, I, I can rely on. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that is really the true issue to me. Mm -hmm. Our ability to move people easily, you know, from one place to the next. And if we focus on that, um, maybe we could spend some more resources thinking about that as against building more facilities. Okay, okay. I might be controversial there, okay. <laughs> but yeah. that's how I see it, okay. Okay. right? Yeah. Um, so to get from Port of Spain to, to, to Coover, mm. how difficult is that if, if, if we have a, a network mm. that is easy to move people? Yeah. I don't think it's difficult, it's done outside. So what you are saying is that to start a cycling project, you don't need a circuit to start with because you are now beginning to train the cyclists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you use the road or you use the, road. the different car parks and things like that. So it's a non-issue if someone comes and says, I want to start a cycling program, but do have a venue. No, you get a safe venue, you look at it, you evaluate, make sure that you risk the, the venue, and you, you start. So you and your federation, have you all start to organize a community drive 
by going into communities and identifying. We have not know. started that as yet. Mm -hmm. So this, these well, are I, new I, well, things. I know, I know you're only there yeah. about 27 this, days, and it, I mean, one of the major things you would have had to deal with is the continuation of those guys on the road to the Olympics. So we are quite aware of that, but I guess that is one um, something in the making that you're going to be looking at. Yeah, and, and you have to remember, I'm only there for one year. Okay. okay? So, yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. my term end comes to an end in December. December, right? December. okay. Right. right, we'll have our AGM, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm just completing part of a four-year term. Okay, right? yes, I'm sorry, Romani left. Yeah, right. um, so Robert Farrier mm. pre previously, and then Romani, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So, yes, those are things that as an, as an federation, we have to put in place, mm -hmm. right? So it's about taking um, um, one step at a time, right? It's about engaging a wider mass of support, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, to move some of these projects, mm -hmm. right? Because, uh, you know, Ireland as the president can't move these things. You have to have support yeah, you have uh, to, yeah. and, and volunteers to help move some of the things. But you have to put the organization mm -hmm. structure in place mm -hmm. to allow for it. Okay. You have one year remaining. What are the priorities that you have? Because I know you have a lot of ideas, a lot of plans, but you have to set priorities. What are some of the major priorities that you have set to deal with urgently? All right, so that's why I came back to my building blocks. Mm -hmm. That's why I identified these four building blocks. Mm -hmm. The one was to ensure that the, we, we are a, a good, nice, steady pathway towards the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, the second one was get funding immediately, right? Find ways to ensure that some of the programs what are some, what, what are some of the ways that you all intend to find funding? Because well, we, well, we, we know funding is a major problem right. in everything, sports, outside of sports, with everything right now in the country. How do you, what are some of the, 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 the plans that you all have to, to right. generate? Um, so so um, I'm working currently on a raffle okay. with a vehicle. Yes. Okay. Right. And I'm in, I'm in discussion with a supplier. Okay. That's right. Good. And that is something that is a short term um, a fundraiser, mm -hmm. right? Once all is in place, we expect a launch, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then that will take us just, hopefully, just before the Olympics to have that vehicle and others raffle. Mm -hmm. That will bring some level of income. Um, just today, I was going through some of the key fits that we have. And there is a, a way for us to be able to raise some funds from some of those um, um, projects or some of those events that we have on the calendar. Okay. All right. Um, so those are just short term kinds of things, but you have to find a way to make a constant um, earning. Mm -hmm. And some of that, we have to sit down a little bit in terms of changing the business model. I have some social media things that I'm yeah. looking at, right? Um, looking at crowdfunding, right? So there are some things that that I'm looking at, but it's too early to, yeah, yeah, to say yeah, because yeah, I yeah, need yeah, to yeah. make sure that when we build the framework, yeah, it's, it's we then be able to advance, yeah, yeah. right? Any major um, competitions or anything? Oh yeah, well, we have, we have, I mean, yearly we participate in the elite um, Pan Am Championship mm. track, and that's coming up in May. Local or no, it's a regional event. Okay, okay. Right, and then we have um, the road elite Pan Am tra um, road championships that mm -hmm. also is coming up mm -hmm. shortly in the second half, mm -hmm. or first, second to third mm -hmm. quarter. Um, locally, what we are trying to do is have um, the youth development a program every month mm -hmm. to deal with that. All right. Um, we have some couple road races. Next week we have a, a road race um, coming up. We have this afternoon we'll be talking a little bit about, more about that with the, with the um, committee. Okay. All right. Um, there's something that um, I wouldn't release it yet, but something I'm planning to involve some of the cyclists who are not really registered okay. with the Federation. Right. I think uh, it's... That's how we have getting uh, You know, I, I call it, if I want to release it today, mm. I call it a... Um, a wellness challenge. Okay. So you know to bring back some of that rivalry, friendly rivalry, mm -hmm. and um, competitive spirit among those persons who are not really registered, who are not looking to go on the track or race or 
compete, but they could compete around, mm. among their, their yes, peers, yes, yes, yes. you know? So there are some things that, that um, we're trying to, to put together, mm. right? Um, with respect to the um, um, education and awareness, um, drug awareness, so the, I think it's somewhere around the 7th of March, the plan is to have a education and awareness for the clubs, the art leagues, the, uh, the national art leagues, so that we could, you know, continue that um, education and, um, and um, um, awareness program. Okay. Now, I know that by the time you make two blink, the Olympic is going to be over. We're going to have to look beyond 2020. Are we going to have to start by looking for a coach? Right? Because we, we, we definitely need a coach. And we need to get more Nicholas Brongs and Tail Campbells out there. 2020 and beyond, where would you like or what would you like to see happen with the Federation and the sports in general? Well, um, first we have to continue and build the development program, okay, at the very, very early stage and have a pathway so that, so that kids from what you call youth developers can move into different pools after the talent is identified. Mm -hmm. So whether we have an endurance pool or a, 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 a high performance pool, because do we, have that do we have that at present? But we have the high performance okay, pool. Right. The, the high right. performance pools was those guys, Quincy, um, yeah. um, Quincy Brown, the others, mm -hmm. right? That was part of the high performance pool. Yeah. So we but have do you have a pool under them in the sense that this pool that is under them, a development pool, you yes, may be talking could about, push them. Well, that's that's the intention right, because yeah. that is the intention. You want to be able to build that development pool mm. that could filter into the high performance pool, yeah. right? And that's an area that we need to to work seriously on. Mm -hmm. But again, to do those programs, you have to have a coach or coaches, yes. and to have the supporting. Um, cast surrounding yeah, yes, that. Do, yeah. That requires funding, okay. right? But notwithstanding that, we that is the plan to move forward from okay. the vision that I, right. I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And yes, we have to have a, um, um, national coaches for each of those programs. Another um, um, area is getting into the schools, right? Having a school um, league. That will be, so that yeah. is another mm -hmm. filter that will create mass, mm -hmm. right? Um, but one has to already also consider your resources that you have available. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I said yeah. strategically um, building capacity because you don't want to do things and you don't have the resources. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. watered down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, there's a couple of things that you have to do. Build your capacity. Um, know what your capacity look like and know what you can do at this point in time. But looking forward, I mean, I see now an organization that is one of the top organizations in the country with, with um, millions and millions of, of, of um, dollars in sponsorship, right? And to be able to, you know, add value to um, developing a, 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 a society that is, you know, um, healthy mm -hmm. and otherwise. Mm -hmm. So make our contribution in, in terms of that. That's how I, that's where I see the thing going. So you are confident in the next couple of months that we can expect to see some improvement in the sport of cycling. Well, I didn't get into this without thinking that. Yeah. So I'm a kind of dreamer, big thinker. Um, mm -hmm. So this is how I see it. Notwithstanding all the challenges that yeah, well, might everything, exist. Everything, everything has the, has the, right? yeah, the, the challenges. It's about it? getting um, all hands on deck mm -hmm. is about um, the fraternity seeing that there's so much we can do mm -hmm. and it's all about the athlete and building people. And you are getting, building you're getting total support from the other Well, you will have some the, challenges. Yes, I yeah. mean, nobody would, everybody wouldn't come on board yeah. so easily, but yeah. hopefully when they see um, what, is, what is 
um, what I am trying to achieve, mm -hmm. hopefully they get on board, okay. you know? Okay. Hopefully they get on board. Okay. Those who are, you know, well, then, may not like, be there like, as yet. Likewise, in everything, you don't get everybody. And once there's change, you, you tend, some people accept change and personally quickly, and then some again takes a little yeah. while, you know, to, 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 to get it. But one thing I must um, say, you know, congrats to you for, is the manner in which the transition from the losing of Mr. Hartwell and the issue regarding the, the cyclists and them and getting them back on track so quickly and having someone like um, the Craig. Craig on board so they don't really fall by the wayside but the continuity continues you know so I must congratulate you on that um, that step forward so before we wrap any closing um, comments remarks you would like to share? Well, um, all I would say is that um, we uh, at the Federation is, you know, look out for good things from the Federation. We are in a transition period and um, you'll be seeing things that will be happening and, you know, um, get on board. This is about, about People development, really. We say sport, but it's also about people development. It's about building a nation. It's about young people. Yeah. How do we keep them engaged, keep them in positive activities? And sport is one. And Cycling I, is just another medium. And that is where we need corporate trying to be able to come on board because we see how fast we are losing the young ones because old people are dying Again, yeah. you know, it's the young ones. Yeah. So you notice I stay away from the word bring corporate. You know, I, I try to stay away from that because yeah. one has to see delivery, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, um, hopefully when we start to, to deliver. do the things that is required that, yeah. that they, will influence, come, that they will come on board. Yeah. That's automatic. Yeah, but I, I, That's I, an automatic I, I, expectation. I, I, I would think that <laughs> cycling between young Nicholas Paul and Tineel, I think they have done so much as young people that I would have thought by now some corporate company would have come on board and you know and embrace them you know and use them as a motivating factor for other young people you know I really thought that because I mean they, they, not saying the rest didn't do but these two nivellers have really for the past two years have really put yeah. trying to be well, on the when, map with when you really, and, and I keep saying when you really look at the achievement of Let's just say Nicholas Paul, Tinil also. Mm. But and both achievements are very humongous when you say a world record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah in yeah, Trinidad, yeah. a world record. I wonder I mean, if we still I don't think we I don't think that we has have, we haven't appreciated us yet. No, I don't think we have yeah, appreciated yeah, because yeah. you know, look at looking at it, this is something yeah. phenomenal. Mm. You know, we be saying we can't achieve. Yeah. No, we achieving notwithstanding, Tinil, mm -hmm. achieving notwithstanding. Okay. To get on the break on the world stage and yeah. road, it's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So, George, thank Mr. you Roberts, for having It was me. a pleasure, and let me wish you all the best in the next couple of months. And I hope that at the end of your term, you would have done what you said, and maybe you will get another term to continue, because it's hard to start something for a short piece of, piece of time and stop it. You know, you want a longer. For, for what you want to achieve, you need more time. So again, I hope that you will get that time. <laughs> Thanks, George. Well, viewers, you have come to the end of another edition of uh, Scoreboard on ACT. And if you miss any part of the program, there's a repeat tomorrow at 1 p.m. Join us next week, same time, as we bring something from the sporting capital of Trent Tobago. So have a blessed week. See you next week. Mm -hmm.